All right, I'm David Reinhardt. I'm Willie Williams. And we're going to be discussing calculus and orthopedics. So the first thing, um, orthopedics background, is the study of musculoskeletal system. And ortho in Greek, it means to straight. And pedics is, it refers to children. So when it first came out, this guy here, Nicholas and Andre, he, um, started orthopedics and he well he didn't really start it but he coined the term and that's what he's known for in ortho orthopedics history if you want to say um he would actually work on his first patients were children with bone bone abnormalities and he would actually work on diagnosing instead of treating those those uh, abnormalities so um some of the things in orthopedics that that they focus on is the bones joints ligaments tendons muscles and nerves um, and and uh, today orthopedics they do the same thing they uh, focus on the diagnosing and uh, well they try to treat a little bit more now compared to when it first started anybody here broken a bone cool yeah I, I uh, broke one last <laughs> last year and I had to be I was on a scooter and I had to go to the orthopedic center it's a lot of fun it's anything <laughs> but cool <laughs> <laughs> This guy right here, his name is Benjamin Gompers. Benjamin Gompers was uh, Jewish, and he came from a family of Jewish merchants from Holland. He's one of three children. He was self-educated, um, and how he educated himself was by reading Newton and McLaurin. He, at his actual like education, where he would actually talk about math and stuff like that also, it was at Spitalfields Mathematical Society, and today it's known as L the London Mathematical Society. and. His occupation was an actuary. He was actuary for the Guardian Insurance Office to the Alliance Insurance Company. Um, he's important because he actually developed a tumor growth model, in which they use in orthopedics for like if it, if it's, if it's a tumor in your hips or joints or somewhere. They that's what they used it when it first came out. Um, this is the actual Gumpers model. G of N equals N times B minus A of L, L N of N. Um, N is the number of tumor cells. A and B are constants matched to the data. However, this function is not defined for N um, when, it, when N equals zero. And to find out what N, we can take the limit of N as N approaches zero and it becomes zero. Um, the, actual, the actual derivative of the growth model tells you the rate of change in which the tumor grows and right down at that last line is the actual derivative of that. Here's the actual breakdown of the application of the tumor growth model. At this particular part right here, this is the actual breakdown. Say if A was 0.5 and B was 0 0.05 and if you want to find the equilibrium which was how much doses you need to actually keep the tumor at a steady level, you would solve for uh, W, or your actual input, in the original function, uh, tumor growth model function. If you wanted to see what was the maximum growth of that tumor, what you would do, you would just, just like finding the derivative and the critical points in regular count one and what we did in count three, you would just take uh, the growth model, take the derivative, and you set it equal to zero and then solve for your input. As And here's the actual graph of this model that they, they use for this particular case. I don't think I'm showing the same. And this is like, by the, by the way, this is like the time right here. And this is the growth of the tumor. So. As far as Gombert's, uh, he actually had a, a few other contributions to math. It wasn't like much, but it was, it was some things. Which was when um, he applied he applied calculus to actual questions, um, and the actuary. Like I said, oh, if if you don't know, an actuary is somebody who basically makes up the estimates for like how much your insurance premiums would be. So, and what he did was he made up a law of mortality. That's what this function is all about. And with that law of mortality, you know, that gave them, helped them 
fine rates and things like that to charge people. So, and uh, the actual definition of it I got from classof1.com was the death rate is the sum of an age-independent component, the Mecham term, named after William Mecham, and an age-dependent component, the Gompers function, named after Benjamin Gompers, which increases exponentially with age. But it's, it's funny because if you look at it, um, it starts off higher, goes low, and then goes high again. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to combine RoboCop with some mannequin um, uh, doctors, and we get RoboDoc. <laughs> news tonight, just as GPS and the dashboard of a car can tell us where to drive, there is technology that tells surgeons exactly where to cut and how to go about operations like knee surgery. But why not just rely on a skilled surgeon for that? What about when the doctors themselves choose to rely on that technology? Our report on all of it tonight from our chief science correspondent, Robert Bazell. Just confirm her appointment. Jeffrey Chesky. A 50-year-old dentist suffered knee damage from skiing and bicycling accidents. I basically just had bone-on-bone -bone contact in, in my knee and had quite a bit of pain. But the injury was limited to one tiny area. Straight out that left leg. He didn't need a total knee replacement and turned to the latest technology for the precision repair. I believe in technology. Do you want to give it a try? Sure. Until recently, robotics, like this teaching system at UCLA, were mostly used by surgeons to operate more precisely in smaller areas. It's really amazingly easy to do. And what you're seeing here is a 3D model. But the system Dr. Andrew Pearl employed on Chutsky at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York takes the technology to a higher level. With the knee locked in place, a system of cameras and imaging devices creates a virtual model so the surgical team can see exactly what is wrong and devise a plan to fix it. I can move it into the knee, bury it into the knee, bring it down the edge of the knee, and literally put it exactly where I want it to. Once the plan is set, the surgeon carries out the operation. Point one there. By programming numbers into the robotic system, which guides the surgical equipment into place. A lot of people will call this type of technology a GPS for the OR. That is to say you have an additional guidance system that allows you to place your implant exactly where you want it. Five months after his surgery. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no limitations to anything I can do. I have no pain whatsoever. Chusky says his knee is as good as new. The robotic system is constantly being updated and generally appeals to younger surgeons. Uh, quicker and less painful recovery. The many see it as playing a bigger role in the operating room of the future. Robert Bazell, NBC News, New York. When I look at my phone, I see the place where I keep home things, work things, everything. But my girls see a shiny toy. Kids. <laughs> Now, <coughs> that ro RoboDoc. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about RoboDoc. So RoboDoc consists of RoboDoc, um, OrthoDoc, and a CT scan. And a CT scan is a computerized um, topography, or um, tomography. And what a tomographic image is, is basically a cross section of, let's say, your leg. So then you just see the bone. And what, what, the, CT, what the CT scanner does, it, go, it takes images all around leg or whatever it is that you're taking a picture of. And um, the program is collecting all of these images and creating a 3D image. image. So then what the doctor does, he um, uses this program in order to plan his surgery. And they use the actual computer program to plan the surgery, hit the execute button, basically, and you have RoboDoc perform high precision surgery. Now, that doesn't mean that Skynet's going to take over the world and take, a, take our jobs, it just means that we have better precision. These are some pictures. Right here we have a CT scanner. And then OrthoDoc is just the um, 3D workstation. And then RoboDoc to your right. Yeah. 
As I said. <laughs> okay. Mm, so, okay. So, question is, how does Robot Robodot work in the configuration or how each component works with the 3D CAT scan, Orthodox and Robodot, with a CAT scan? Actually, it takes the 3D images of, of your affected area and what that does after that they actually select and position the best fitting image of that area would look at and the actual orthodoc is the actual computer and the and it shows the program of that I don't, when, when y'all were looking at the the image the 3d image that's orthodoc and um, orthodoc is what the doctor can see basically how he's going to precisely precisely cut into your body and <laughs> so and um once again, it just people as of in the new like in the news channel they say that it's going to take over and all that stuff. But Skynet is actually um, it's not it's not actually something to take over like jobs. It's, it's but, not, yeah, it's, it's, take over. it's just better ways it's to. It's not real. It's not gonna get us. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's just better ways to actually to perform surgery in a more precise way. So here's an actual image of RoboDoc and compared to actually doing it by hand guess if y'all can guess like this is the hand drawn or uh, this is the hand uh, incision and here's RoboDoc and it's utilized basically like I said to, to give a, a precise bone cavity and joint surface pre of preparation it's only active it's the only active robotic system cleared by the FDA for use in orthopedic surgery in the USA, and it's used in over 28,000 um, total hip arthroplasty? arthroplasty and total knee arthroplasty surgical procedures worldwide. So, all right, that's our project.